So let's look at the first one. The first thing we have to do, the very first thing we do, we're going to look at the answer choices as always to see what's changing. Clearly, the only thing changing in these answer choices is the punctuation. So we know we're dealing with punctuation. The next thing you want to do is draw, an, draw a line where the punctuation is, separating the end of the first sentence and the beginning of the second sentence. So we're going to read up until the word test, because that's the end of the first sentence. So we're going to read up until the word test. So Jonah studied every day for the big test. Jonah studied every day for the big test. Stop, because that's where my line is. Is that a complete or incomplete sentence? Well, what do you remember about complete sentences and incomplete sentences? So is there a subject? Jonah, yeah, Jonah, Jonah is the subject. What is Jonah doing? Studied every day for the big test. So that's the predicate. The predicate is whatever is doing the action, who the action that's being done by the subject, that's the predicate. So what is Jonah doing? Studied every day for the big test. So we have a predicate. What's the last thing we got to figure out, guys? Can it stand on its own? Is it a complete thought? Jonah studied every day for the big test. Yeah, that doesn't sound like I stopped abruptly. It doesn't sound like new information is needed. It's a complete thought. So it has a subject and a predicate, and it's a complete thought. Therefore, the first sentence is complete. If you look back at your notes, what punctuation category can we automatically eliminate because this first sentence is complete? We can eliminate go punctuation because if you look back at your notes, go punctuation, the first sentence must be incomplete. So our first sentence, is complete. So automatically, we can eliminate go punctuation because go punctuation says the first sentence must be incomplete. So do you remember what constitutes go punctuation? Let's take a look. Choice A, there's no punctuation in between these two sentences. No punctuation is considered go punctuation. So we can cross off A. How about choice B, a comma? Is the comma followed by fanboys? No. So this is just a regular plain old comma separating the two sentences. That's a go punctuation. Choice C, same thing, a comma not followed by fanboys. So automatically D is the correct answer because it has a semicolon, and a semicolon is an example of stop punctuation. And if you look at the second sentence, the second sentence is also complete as well. So through process of elimination, we were able to find the correct answer. But if you look at both sentences, they're both complete. What type of punctuation do you need to use? Uh, what type of, what do the sentences need to be for you to use stop punctuation? They both, both sentences need to be complete to use stop punctuation. Semicolon, which is choice D, that's an example of stop punctuation. Therefore, that is the best answer. Let's look at another one. So the first thing we do, we compare the answer choices. We see that the punctuation is changing in between the answer choices, so we know that's what we're testing. So the next thing that we do, we put our line to separate the beginning, the end of the first sentence and the beginning of the second sentence. So let's read the first sentence up until our line that we drew. Many factory workers in the 19th century thought their jobs were safe. Many factory workers in the 19th century thought their jobs were safe. So how do we check whether or not this is a complete sentence? Does it have a subject? Does it have a predicate? And is it complete? 
Well, what's the subject? Factory workers. What are the factory workers doing? What's the action that the factory workers in the sentence are doing? They thought their jobs were safe. That's an action, thinking their jobs were safe. So the factory workers thought their jobs were safe. So it has a predicate, it has a subject. Is it a complete sentence? Many factory workers in the 19th century thought their jobs were safe. Yes, it is a complete sentence. It stands on its own. It doesn't stop abruptly. It doesn't sound like there's any additional information that we need, so it's a complete sentence. So we know our first sentence is complete. So since our first sentence is incomplete, what type of punctuation can we automatically eliminate? Go punctuation, because go punctuation says what? That the first sentence must be incomplete. So where do we see go punctuation? Let's take a look. Choice A is go punctuation, because remember, no punctuation is considered go punctuation. And there's no punctuation in choice A. Nothing there. So choice A is go punctuation. Choice B, there's a comma, but is what kind of punctuation is choice B? It's a stop punctuation because it's a comma followed by fanboys. Comma followed by but, but is the B in fanboys. So comma, but together, that is a stop punctuation. So we're not gonna eliminate that. Choice C comma followed by we, fanboys. Nope, there's no W in fanboys. So comma followed by we is a go punctuation. That's just a regular old fashioned comma. So now we're between B and D. So what kind of punctuation is B? We've already said that's a stop punctuation and choice D, a period, is also a stop punctuation. So we can tell right there, since the only remaining answer choices is stop, that the second sentence is also gonna be complete. We don't even really need to test that because the only remaining answer choices with the punctuation indicate that it's gonna be a complete sentence as well. So which answer choice do we go with and why? We go with B because you don't put a period and then start a new sentence with but. Period followed by but. So period stops the sentence, but starts the new sentence. We don't start a new sentence with but. But in choice B, comma followed by but together serves as the stop punctuation. So B is the correct answer. So those were examples of stop punctuation. Now let's move to half stop punctuation. Do you remember the rule? And you can look at your notes. Do you remember when I used half stop punctuation? What the relationship between the sentences must be to use half stop punctuation. The first sentence must be a complete sentence. As long as the first sentence is a complete sentence, you can use half stop punctuation. So let's look at an example. So what's the very first thing we do, guys? We see what's changing in the answer choices. The punctuation is what's changing in the answer choices. So we know that's what I'm going to be working with is punctuation. So let me draw my line between the end of the first sentence and the beginning of the second sentence. So let's look at the first sentence. Parrots don't respond well to genres with the least noticeable upbeat. Go ahead. I want to challenge you to press pause, complete the remainder of the question, implement the strategies we've talked about, and see if you can come up with the correct answer choice. This is an easy one. I have faith in you. So then when you're ready, press play, and then let's compare notes. So in the first sentence, is there a subject? Yeah, the parrots. The parrots are the subject. So yep, it has a subject. 
What about the next sentence? Uh, what about the predicate? Does that first sentence have a predicate? What are the parrots doing? Is there an action that the parrots are doing? Yeah, they don't respond well to genres with the least noticeable B. So yeah, so it does have a predicate. The predicate is the action being performed by the subject. Lastly, is it complete? Parrots don't respond well to genres with the least noticeable upbeat. Yes, that's a complete thought. It doesn't stop abruptly. It doesn't sound like I left you hanging and need to follow up with any additional information. So it is a complete thought. So the first sentence is complete. So now that we know the first sentence is complete, what punctuation can we automatically eliminate? Go punctuation, because go punctuation says what? that the first sentence must be incomplete. So do you see any go punctuation? Choice B is the only go punctuation. It's just a comma not followed by a fanboys. So we're gonna cross off B. So now that we're left with three different answer choices, let's continue and look at what the second sentence says. <laughs> Waltzes and salsa. Waltzes and salsa. I'm reading to the right of the line that I drew in my answer choice to separate. I'm reading to the right of that line now to read my second sentence. Waltzes and salsa. That's an incomplete sentence. I don't even need to draw that out. Waltzes and salsa. There's no subject. Or actually, waltzes and salsa is the subject. What are the waltzes and salsa doing? <laughs> they're not doing anything. Waltzes and salsa, okay, what's the action that they're doing? And it's clearly an incomplete thought. Just saying waltzes and salsa, that's just totally a bunch of information that's still needed to complete that idea. So the second sentence is incomplete. So if we have the first sentence complete and the second sentence incomplete, what's the next? We've already eliminated go punctuation. What's the next punctuation that we can eliminate? Stop punctuation. Because stop punctuation says that both sentences need to com be complete. Stop punctuation says they both, the first and the second, both need to be complete. So for that reason, we can eliminate stop punctuation. So choice A, semicolon, that's stop punctuation. All right, now we're between C and D. Both of these are half stop. So which one do we wanna go with and why? Choice D is the correct answer because we don't need a comma between waltzes and salsa. You only use commas to separate a list of items and a list consists of three or more things. Waltz and salsa, that's only two things. So for that reason, choice C is incorrect. Even though it has the correct punctuation in terms of half stop, you gotta make sure there's no other errors in the sentence as well. So choice D is the correct answer. Let's try another half stop one. Go ahead, I wanna challenge you to press pause. Go through this and see if you can figure out are the sentences complete, incomplete, what's the correct punctuation, process of elimination, and come to the right answer. When you're ready, press play and we'll compare notes. So the first, uh, let's look at what's changing in the answer choices. The punctuation is changing in the answer choices. So I know we're dealing with punctuation here because it's the only thing that's changing. So since we're dealing with punctuation, what's the next thing that I do guys? I draw my line, all right. Let's read up until my line. Let's read that first sentence until I get to my line. It was very important for him to do well. It was very important for him to do well. So do I have a subject here? What's my subject? It, it is my subject. What are they saying about it? What is it doing? being very important for him to do well. That's the action, very important for him to do well. 
Is it a complete thought? It was very important for him to do well. Yeah, that, that stands on its own. That doesn't stop abruptly or sound like I need to keep talking. Okay, so the first sentence is complete. We've identified that. It has a subject, it has a predicate, and it can stand on its own. The first sentence is incomplete, so we can automatically eliminate what category of punctuation, guys? Go punctuation. So we can eliminate go punctuation. So choice D is go punctuation. And that's it. Okay, so we've gotten rid of D. So now we got to keep reading and check out what the second sentence is happening with. High scores in all subjects. High scores in all subjects. Does it have a subject? No, it doesn't have a subject. Who or what? Who or what is doing high scores in all subjects? Who or what got high scores in all subjects? It has a predicate, getting high scores in all subjects. That's an action. Is it a complete thought? High scores in all subjects. High scores in all subjects. No, it's not a complete thought. It sounds like there's additional information that I need to finish that thought, to finish that idea. So for all these reasons, the second sentence is incomplete. Incomplete. So we know we need half stop because the first sentence is complete. The second sentence is incomplete. So we can eliminate go, we can eliminate stop, and we need a half stop. And the correct answer is C, because C is the only half stop punctuation. Choice A and B are both stop punctuation. So C is the correct answer for this one.